Ezra chapter 10. Now when Ezra had prayed, chapter 9, the sin is that they have married Gentiles. It is against the law of Moses given by God for Jews to marry outside their tribes and more so for the, uh, the heathen. When the law established Judah to marry Judah, the girls and boys of Benjamin to marry Benjamin, you would also say that the law, you're not to be married to the people of the land, and more so when the land that Israel's gone into is full of witchcraft, full of gods and against God. Solomon sinned against this with strange women, and we read that he went after the God of this, the God of that, built temples for this, and built the high places for that. And there's one thing to show not to marry the heathen for the Jewish people. There's one name I can give you, Jezebel. She was a heathen and married a Jewish king. Now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, that's the first time that word shows up, Interesting where it shows up. Weeping. Casting himself down. His face. Before the house of God. So the house of God's there. They're assembled unto him out of Israel. Let's get the context. This is Israel. We are in the Old Testament. Children of Israel. When we read chapter 10. Gentiles are the strange people we're reading in this chapter. There's no church. Israel. A very great congregation of men and women and children. For the people wept very sore. Conviction. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives, and that's not, that's Gentile wives. Wives are not Jewish. I mean, that's not aliens or anything like that. They don't have arms sticking out of their head and third eyes. and It's Gentile heathen women. Probably Babylonian in all the land. Of the people of the land, which it would be the Canaanites, the Hivites, chapter 9, verse 1. The people that they were supposed to get rid of in Joshua and Judges, which they didn't. Of the people of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Repentance and confession. Now therefore let us, the people, make a covenant with our God. To put away the wives, such as born of them, the sin, the sin against the law, according to the counsel of my Lord, my Lord would be Ezra. Small L. And those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. They haven't been doing the law. Okay, we're going to do what the law says now. We're not under the law in the church age. The Gentiles are not under the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. That thee, verse 4, is Ezra, verse 1. He's cast himself down. He's sitting down. Job sat down in his tragedy. They're like, Ezra, get up. We're going to do right. Then arose Ezra, see, and made the chief priests, that's the high priest, the Levites. Levites are not priests, but all priests are Levites. And all Israel, Jewish, Hebrew, to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear. That's the first time I ever noticed swear is spelled twice, spelled different, two different ways. I have to look at that for a little bit. S W E R and S W A R E. I never noticed that. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, the temple, and went into the chamber of Jonathan, the son of Elship. El and when he came thither, he did eat no bread, nor drank water, for he mourned, fasting, because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. It's all about sin. They come back in the land, they built the temple, and they realize, you know what? We're still sinners. We still violated the law. 
And they made a proclamation throughout the Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem, Israel, unto all the children of captivity, the Hebrews, the Jews, that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the council of the princes of Israel, and the elders, so the people in authority have agreed to this council, all his substance shall be forfeited. That's the only time that word shows up. If you don't come to Jerusalem to our meeting, you lose it all. And himself separate from the congregation of those that have been carried away. You're not going to have no part in what They're going to cut off those who don't come to the meeting. And if you're a Jewish person, you are cut off from the Jewish people. You have no life. Can't do no business. That was a serious thing to be cut off from, from the nation of Israel, being a Jew. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin, they're in with Judah, gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, on the twelfth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God. How's that for a church meeting? Kind of funny because when we go Saturday mornings to our street ministry, we see this place we pass, it's a fitness area, and they're outside doing their exercises on the pavement. I don't ever see a church where they done the out, they had their service outside. But they're sitting on the street, probably dirt. And I was thinking pavement, probably dirt. They sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, because of the sin. They fear what God's going to do to them. They just came back from captivity where he sinned as a nation again. We're in trouble. And for the great rain. Now that's an interesting note right there too. The ninth month of great rain. The Bible speaks about the latter, the, the latter rain. I forget the other. There's two rain periods in the Bible. I forget the other one. It's, it's, it's called to mention, pay attention when, you, when you're when you studying rain because it has to do with the second coming of Jesus Christ. The early and latter rain. That's what it is. You know when you read Revelation, the, the tribulation period, there is no rain. You get blood instead of rain. Elijah. Cause for, cause for a famine, no rain. Moses, he's throwing blood. And when Jesus Christ comes for the land of Palestine or the land of Israel, when the people will get it from Jesus Christ, there's got to be that rain to be the fruit. So somehow this is tied into the second advent of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee when, when Jesus comes back, he's going to find the Jews in the same state they are now. They married Gentiles and they have sinned. And Ezra the priest stood up. Remember, he's, he's a priest. And said unto them, Ye have transgressed. What's the transgression? Ye have taken strange wise to increase the trespass of Israel. That's the context of the chapter. That's it. It's laid upon Israelites had married strange wives. Not a church doctrine area to go run to. And I said yesterday when I read in Corinthians, Paul says for a person to marry, marry another Christian. Okay. Then all the congregation answered, said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it's a time of much rain, ninth month. We are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed this thing. We can't just do this in one day. Let now our rulers of all the congregations stand. Let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times. Then set your date. Then set your calendar. You're going to make an appointment like you do with a doctor. On Monday at 2.15 you got an appointment. Be there for Monday. And with them the elders in every city and the judges thereof unto the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. We're not going to wait. The only thing we're going to do is 
there's just so many people. We're going to set a date. Please, Lord God, have mercy on us. I mean, imagine what it'd be like. Like I said, I gave the example of a doctor's office appointment. Imagine what it'd be like if everybody showed up in the doctor's office that belonged to that doctor that one afternoon. It'd be too many. That's why a doctor said, you meet me on Monday, at this time, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There's specific times. You can't have everybody run in at the same time. Chaos. Chaos. Verse 15. Only Jonathan, the son of Ashiel, and Azahiah, the son of Tekiah, were employed about this matter. Here's a job. Employed. And Meshulam and Shebeziah, the Levite, the Levite, okay, these are, you know, of the children of Levi, working with the priests, helped them. Remember, the priests were the Levites, and the priests themselves. And the children of the captivity, Hebrews, Jewish, did so. And as of the priest, with certain chief of the uh, fathers, after the house of their, their fathers, and all of them by their name, were separated to set down the first day, the tenth month, to be examined. That's the first time that shows up. The matter. All right, Rachel, we'll find out who that is. Okay, yeah. so these men are called to the judges to help the judges, the Levites. They're going to make this a legal matter. They're making it a case, a suit. And verse 16, the children of captivity did so, and Ezra the priest with certain chief of the fathers after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their name were separated and sat down on the first day of the tenth month to examine. That's the first time that word shows up the matter. That's a, that's a law term, examine. Comes out of the Bible. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. Two months later, that's how, that's how long this has been going on. There are 12 months in the Jewish calendar, 30 days in a month to the lunar. Among the sons of the priests that were found that had taken strange wives, namely, okay, here's the priests. People say you ought not to name the people. The Bible names names. Jesus named names. Ezra's going to name names. Paul names names. Peter names names. If you believe you ought not to name names, you are not a Bible believer. So here we go. Here's the priest. Namely of the sons of Jeshua, that's the high priest. The son of Jezedek and his brethren, Methahiah and Eliezer and Jerob and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that would put away their wives. Remember, we don't have a high priest, but Jesus this is Hebrew in the Old Testament. And being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. So a sin offering. And then a value day of unvalidating the marriage. Hebrew men, Jewish men who had come back from the captivity of Babylon in Jerusalem in front of the priests, in front of the Levites. Of the law of Moses. And the sons of Emmer, here we go. Hananiah, Zebediah, the sons of Aram, Masahiah, and Elijah, and Shemaniah, and Jehiel, and Uzziah, the sons of Persher, Elohniah, Meshiah, Ishmael, that's a name to have, Nathio, and Jezebeth, and Elisha, also the Levites, who are not priests, 
Joseph Ab and Shimei Kelaya. The same is Kelida. He's got two names. Bob, Robert, Pethiah, Judah, and Eliezer. Of the singers. <laughs> Here's your singing praises to God. And the porters. Only one singer. But it says plural. Of the poor is the doorkeepers, Shalom and Talon and Uri. Moreover of Israel, here's the people, the sons of Parag, Remai, Jeziah, and Malchiah, and Mimmum, Eliezer, and Malchijah, Benaniah, the sons of Elam, Mathaniah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, and Abdi, Jeremoth, and Elah, and the sons of Zehu, Elihu, Elisha, Mananiah, Jeremoth, Zabab, Azizi. Of the sons of Bebeah, -Bee Jehovah, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athaliah. The sons of Benai, Meshillam, Makkah, Adelam, Joseph, Shiel, and Raymond. The sons of Path Path Moab, that's an interesting name. I wonder who he married into. Adelon and Kolai and Ben, I mean, that name right there is just guilty. Benai, Meshulam, Metalai, Bethiel, and Benai, and Macedon, or Manasseh. The sons of Haram, Eliezer, Ishida, Malchudum, Shemaniah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, Shemaniah, the sons of, look, look at these names, he's naming these guys in public. The sons of Sheb, you imagine we did that in the church today? <coughs> now, there are some churches when they're going to de-church someone because they had done a, a, a wicked crime against the church, they will call them out from the pulpit. But can you imagine having a, a, a service in the church? All right, we're going to call the people up one by one. We're going to tell them what they did this week. There would be no church attendance. You got a congregation of Jewish people who are involved in the sin, and Ezra saying, "Okay, here's the people." And yet, when you read these names of people, you got to remember, what have they done? They have asked God and repented and for and been forgiven of the sins. And an unusual case here, because there's no other case like this in the Bible. That's why you got Mark is Ezra chapter 10 is Hebrew, Jewish, Israel in Israel. You can't anywhere else. Okay, 33. The sons of Husham, Manai, Methodai, Zeba, Elephalet, Jeremiah, Math, no, how that name keeps showing up. Shimei, the sons of Benai, Madia, Amram, and Uel, Beniah, Benaliah, Chihoth, Bena, Baruch, Russia, you can't say you don't have read the Bible when you're going through these names. Nathanai, Mathenai, Jeshu, Benai, Benio, Shimio, Shemiah, Nathan. I like that one. <laughs> That's an easy name. Thank you, Lord. I was whole name Nathan. How you doing when someone says, I've read through the Bible? How you doing? And Adaya and Mecca, Nehepi, there's a worse name coming up in Isaiah. The name of Isaiah's son. That's two lines. Mechisma, Shimei, Shario, Azrael, Shimaniah, Shimura, Shalom, Amara, and Joseph. Ooh, there's a, okay. Come on, all these people you got two names that are easy to pronounce. Really? And the sons of Nebo, okay. Jael, Mathanai, Zabab, Zeba, Zadam, Joel, okay, there's another easy name. Now, these are not the names you know in the Bible. It's like Joseph, that's not the son of Jacob. Joel, this is not the guy the book, the book of Joel. All these had taken strange wives. Look at all them we just read, taken strange wives. There are names. So when somebody says, oh, you ought not to know names, just tell them you've never read your Bible. Okay? And some of them had wives by whom they had children. What a what an end of passage of the entire book of Ezra. 
Yay, we're going back. We built the temple. Hallelujah to God. Here comes a priest. He's ready. He's reading the word. The people are weeping. They're standing to hear the word of God being taught to them. They are happy. They're over joy. Oh, we're crying because remember the first temple we closed the book is with strange wives and had children. Move to Nehemiah, the building of the city. That's a strange end. Genesis, it ends with a coffin. In Egypt, Joseph. As remarkable as Joseph is, he ends up in the coffin in Egypt. Glory to God. His word is great. It's weird, but it's great. 